हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ईसी एकेडमी In this lecture, let us understand block diagram representation of discrete time systems. Here we will understand how a discrete time system can be represented using a block diagram. The block diagram gives the visual representation of a discrete time systems. This block diagram will simplify the understanding and designing the system using basic building blocks. So they will help. in understanding and designing the systems by using some basic building blocks there are different kinds of basic building blocks first one is adder the adder will add two signals for example if we take x1 and x2 as two signals the output of the adder can be given as y of n is equal to x1 of n plus x2 of n so here in between we are adding plus symbol that represents addition of two sequences or two signals so this is the block diagram representation of adder so as you can see we are having a sequence x1 of n and x2 of n these two sequences are added so addition is represented as a circle with plus sign so output will be equal to x1 of n plus x2 of n so this is the block diagram representation of adder similarly we are having a constant multiplier for example if we are having a sequence x of n and a constant a so this a can be multiplied with x of n to give the output so we can write y of n is equal to a x of n so this is the representation of constant multiplier so where we are having the input sequence x of n on the signal flow line so we are having a which is a constant so this a will be multiplied with the input signal to obtain the output signal which is a x of n so here constant a is multiplied with x of n hence it is known as constant multiplier next is a signal multiplier if we are having two signal or two sequences x1 of n and x2 of n the signal multiplier will multiply these two sequences and will get the output signal y of n is equal to x1 of n multiplied with x2 of n so this is the block diagram representation of signal multiplier as you can see we are having two sequences are two signals x1 of n and x2 of n these two are multiplied and output is given as y of n is equal to x1 of n into x2 of n so here in the block diagram we will write a circle and the multiply symbol to represent signal multiplier next is unit delay as the name implies it will delay the signal by one unit so if we are having the input sequence or input signal x of n this input will be delayed by one unit at the output so that can be represented as y of n is equal to x of n minus 1 so here minus represents delay plus represents advance since it is unit delay so it is represented by minus sign with the value 1 so x of n minus 1 represents the unit delay so this can be represented in block diagram as z inverse that represents a unit delay so when the input is given with a unit delay output will be equal to x of n minus 1 next is unit advance so which means it will advance the input signal by one unit for example if we are having x of n as the input the output will be equal to x of n plus 1 so here plus sign represents advance so x of n plus 1 which means the input sequence is advanced by one unit so this can be represented by z which represents unit advance so we have written z because z to the power of 1 is nothing but z when the input sequence is applied 
to n unit advance output will be equal to x of n plus 1. So using these block we can represent the discrete time signal in block diagram. Now let us take an example for a block diagram representation of discrete time system. Here output y of n can be given as 0.25 y of n minus 1 plus 0.5 x of n plus 0.5 x of n minus 1. So this is the representation of output sequence. So as you can observe the output sequence consists of the input x of n as well as the output y of n. So here y of n in this sequence represents the feedback. So this is the feedback sequence of output signal. So first we can multiply 0.5 with x of n then 0.5 with x of n minus 1. So x of n minus 1 which means there is a unit delay. As you can observe from this block diagram we are taking the input sequence x of n then there is a unit delay for the signal then 0.5 is multiplied then we are considering x of n which is multiplied with 0.5. So these two sequences should be added. So that's why in between we are placing a adder that will add these two sequences. Then we can multiply 0.25 with y of n minus 1. So y of n minus 1 represents unit delay of output signal. So as you can observe here, we have taken an unit delay of the output sequence y of n in the feedback and it is multiplied with 0.25. So as you can observe here, this sequence and this sequence should be added. So that's why in between these two sequences, we are having an adder. So the output y of n can be given as y of n minus 1 which is multiplied with 0.25 plus 0.5 x of n which is added with 0.5 x of n minus 1. So this is the block diagram representation for the given sequence. Alternatively, we can have one more representation where we can take 0.5 as common and we can write y of n is equal to 0.25 y of n minus 1 plus 0.5 multiplied with x of n plus x of n minus 1. So here we have taken 0.5 as common and written this sequence. So here what we can do? We can take x of n and unit delay of x of n and we can add these two sequence. After that we can multiply the constant 0.5. So the same thing is done here as you can observe we are taking x of n and x of n minus 1 we are adding these two sequence then it is multiplied with 0.5 which is constant. Then we can take y of n minus 1 which is multiplied with 0.25 and it is added with this sequence. So these two are the block diagram representation of the given sequence. Here you need to remember some of the important concept. We will perform some memoryless operations which are adder, constant multiplier and signal multiplier. So these operations are known as memoryless operations since it does not require any memory. So we have memory operations like unit delay and unit advance. So these operations are known as memory operations since they need to know what is the sequence before performing the operation. The system is known as relaxed system when the output of all delays are zero at a time n naught. So that if the output of all delays are zero such type of systems are known as relaxed system. So block diagram representation can be used to understand the signal filtering. 
it can be used in control system for system analysis and also it can be used to analyze the real time digital signal processing so, so to simplify all this concept and to understand we can use the block diagram representation so finally we can say the block diagram provides a clear and systematic way to design and analyze the discrete time system so to design the system as well as to analyze the discrete time system the block diagrams are very much helpful and it will give the systematic way and it will give the clear concept the block diagram also aid in understanding both external behavior and internal configurations of the system so using the block diagram we can understand both external behavior of the system as well as the internal behavior of the system so this is one of the major advantage of block diagram representation this is about block diagram representation of discrete time system hope you have understood the topic thank you